and what is up YouTube my name is G3 iron and today we are looking at our runs of let's run maps 100 haunted mansions shout out and thanks so much to uh, good buddy and guildy Deserad for playing support and for being a good sport running alongside me for these 100 haunted mansion maps now a uh, couple of quick changes to my character from our last set of let's run 100 maps and then, of course, we're going to show off Deseret's uh, build and uh, a couple of really awesome items on his support. The couple of major changes, I've swapped over to a Devoto's rather than a Starconia's. Uh, it has greatly helped with move speed. I've lost out on a little bit of life, but really when you're running like 3,000 life, what's you know 89 or 90 flat life anyway who cares and then uh finally managed to six link my wind ripper so now we're finally running uh let's run maps on a six link rather than on a five link which also helped increase our speed i also blessed a few things i uh blessed my Rigwald's quill so that way it's got perfect implicits same thing for my wind ripper uh did also the same for our arbisco's collar and then also divined up our gold worm so that way it's got perfect uh increased quantity now so really what does that mean it means that now instead of running with 63 percent flat increased item quantity we're up to 65 percent flat uh increased item quantity so those were the big changes on my character for this set of maps but let's take a look at Dez. Dez's character first off he's running with this absolutely sick shield the energy shield that he gets off of this is uh, 377 I remember I used to have uh, an energy shield CI base character where I think that's how much energy shield I had on my chest uh, so that was absolutely sick and he spent like a day or a day and a half crafting uh, just for this specific shield. You'll notice it's got plus 45% quality. That is absolutely sick. Then he's also got this absolutely gorgeous Victorio's influence. It's five linked. You don't necessarily need to have everything five linked, but he's got it linked. So that way uh, all of the linked socketed gems are getting bonuses off of, of course, running things like, uh, where is it? Empower, which of course he's running a level four Empower in order to boost his hatred, his haste, his anger, and his wrath. So tons of DPS boosting uh, off of Deseret. I believe my, my DPS legitimately went from like tooltip in game from somewhere around 24 to somewhere like 240k. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous the amount of DPS boost that he provides. He is using a Skyforth's, he's using a Shaper's Touch in his glove slot. He's got this beautiful sword over here that gives him a bunch of flat intelligence as well as auras from your skills. Grant 2% increased damage to you and to your allies. And he's running with a uh, Alpha's Howl that gives 20% reduced purity of fire mana reservation. So that's most of his setup. It's absolutely sick. Again, thanks so much and shout out to Dez for running alongside me and his gorgeous character, which if you'd like to take a look and follow his build, you can do that down below. Dez actually told me that he started playing support in Path of Exile uh, because he found uh, our video talking about support in Path of Exile. So that's that's really cool. I think that's awesome that somebody who's new to the game, this is his first league playing, uh, was attracted to playing support. And sure enough, we had a great time running these maps. So without further ado, let's get into exactly what the uh, profits were or lack thereof. So first off, the setup, some changes to how we were running these maps. I went through and did uh, complete a few more maps on the Atlas. So we're up to 155 out of 159 completion percentage. We alked and we fragmented. We used a sacrifice fragment on every single map. We had roughly 14 reflect maps as we were alking them and roughly 11 temp change. So that increased our expenditure for the total cost for running these maps by 25 chaos because we didn't want to run anything that had reflect and we didn't want to run anything that had temp chains now for this particular run we decided to go all out and this may or may not have been a mistake i don't know uh really it's kind of a judgment call uh whether or not we had good luck or bad luck i'll leave that to you all but look at what we did in order to craft these maps so we bought 100 maps which uh got a good bulk deal from uh, a player that i know for 100 c 
for 100 haunted mansion maps. That was great. Then we spent, obviously, 100 alks. We spent 100 frags. Then we spent 100 white sextants because we uh, allocated one white sextant. I believe it's port map was the one that we used. And then we used three yellow sextants for every single map, which on average right about now in the market is about 800 C uh, for what we spent on these maps. So totally, totally over over invested the general rule in path of exile as you're crafting maps and maybe at some point i'll do a video uh specifically about how to craft your maps and and so if you're interested in that sort of thing let me know down below in the comments below but the general rule is is that the more you invest into your maps the in general the more returns you'll get over an extended period of time so it could be that we didn't get that great of profit margin on these particular maps because we simply only ran 100 now you might be thinking oh you only ran 100 100 maps is a lot well, in the grand scheme of things, uh, you know, 100 maps is nothing in comparison to what you need to run for, you know, 40, 40 out of challenges or even simply completing some of the end game grinds. So really 100 maps, while it's a nice round number for sample size, uh, it's a relatively small number when you're calculating profit over a long period of time factoring in RNG. So anyway, all that is to say, we spent about 1300 chaos rolling and crafting these maps. That is a ridiculous amount of investment for a tier six map. Uh, so again, that's all with the caveat. This is basically the lowest end of yellow map that you would want to run on the map on the Atlas. And so of course we would get a little bit better returns if we chose to do another map. But anyway, this is the map that we did all ex excuses aside. Some interesting notes. We did track uh, breaches as well as a few other interesting uh, potential side quests that popped up. We had eight total breaches that we came up on. We wasted one map because I forgot to sextant it. So that was only just uh, one C plus one frag plus one Alk plus four chisels out of the way. But we only bumped into eight breaches, seven uh, abysses, five Zanas. We did bump into eight trials for Urbu Lab, uh, and then we did bump into Nico nine times, which was great. I actually, uh, in between one of our play sessions, went in and did a bunch of delving because I was like, hey, we've already bumped into Nico a few times, so I better use up a bunch of the sulfite. Uh, and I was very glad of that because then we kept bumping into Nico. So that was great. We did bump into one Abyssal Depths, which was fantastic because it provided us with a lich. I've already mentioned that Desiree, this is his first uh, ever league. And so this was actually his first ever lich that he got to fight. So that was fun. It didn't drop anything great for us. It dropped us uh, a single socket Tomb Fist. So not a big profit margin there. We did, of course, naturally bump into six Einhars uh, along the way where we captured some beasts. I am not factoring in the uh, beasts that we captured into the profit margins on this so that's just another factor to consider the total number of uniques that we found we were using the uh, um, very strict never sync filter both of us were using that same filter and we found about 120 to 140 uniques uh, as we were running through most of those just turned into alk shards so we're going to get into the totals and to the profit but first let's break it down so really quickly the total number of maps that we found was 57 different types of maps with the single greatest map drop being cells we found 17 of those the total value of the maps that we found was roughly 154 chaos this is all calculated via currency cop the total different types of currency that we found was 54. This includes essences as well. The uh, highest value of currency that we found was, of course, exalted drops. We found two exalteds, two pure exalteds that dropped for us along the way. And I think in one of the videos, you'll see uh, that some of the exalts actually drop in one of the videos. We caught that on camera, so that's fun. But uh, whether or not we got lucky or unlucky in having two exalt drops in 100 maps, that really determines whether or not you think this is going to be a more profitable map to run or not. If you say that we got very, very lucky with two out of 100, that's averaging one out of every 50. Okay, that's great, but our profit margin already wasn't great. We'll get to what the total is in just a second. But if you say we were unlucky, then Haunted Mansions actually stands to be pretty reasonable in terms of total profit margin, even with all of this invest investment. But I digress. Okay, total number of cards. One of the reasons why I think this map wasn't more profitable is simply because of the cards uh, that are not available or not specifically unique to the Haunted Mansion layout. So if you pick a layout that you're going to run, make sure that it's got a profitable divination card. Even if the profitable uh, mark of the divination card is like 1C or less, as long as it's profitable and it's unique to that map, then there's chances uh, chances are that you're going to increase your profit margin running that map. Whereas Haunted Mansion, it's got like the Blazing Fire is like the coolest card that can possibly drop. In this league, that's simply not a card that's very, very valuable. 
And so you see, we found 28 of them, but the average price is less than half a chaos. So we spent 28 clicks to make 12C, which is about average. We're going to see that that's actually about average uh, for us in terms of the number of clicks that we had and the number uh, uh, of the, the profit margin back per click. But Again, if you're able to find a layout that's got a higher value divination card than that, it's going to increase your value per click. It's going to increase your profit margin uh, over the long course of time that you are running that particular map. We did find 100 Her Masks, which you may be thinking, my goodness, Iron, 100 Her Masks, that's a lot. You divide that into full sets of it, and that's 25 Sacrifice Fragments. Yes, but remember, we spent 100 Sacrifice Fragments... <laughs> <laughs> to run these maps. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm coughing. Every time I try to laugh the last couple of days, I'm just coughing. It, the reality is that's not going to pay off for itself. That's still putting us in the whole 75 chaos for 75 fragments. So it's the divination card drops on Haunted Mansion uh, were simply lackluster and a bummer. The total number of six sockets that we found, we did track this, and you can see it all in the Imgur album, which is, of course, linked below, more in the video information description section we found 112 six socket recipes if you want to count them all they're all all of those images are there uh for you to count but we found 112 of them for 784 total uh jewelers which you can see in our currency jewelers orbs were the second most valuable thing that we had uh as a total sum of currency throughout the map and throughout this run if we didn't pick up those six sockets or we didn't calculate them apart from it uh really we would have lost out on quite a bit of profit because that's about 70 c worth of profit uh that we found so even more valuable than all of the uh, total flat chaos that dropped uh was the uh was the six socket uh, seven jeweler uh, vendor recipe that we found so that's a very very profitable recipe and one that i highly highly recommend that you run okay in terms of the map watch data the average time that it took us per map was a grand total of three minutes and five seconds the average time in map was less than two minutes sub two minutes for each of these maps which is fantastic uh the layout for haunted mansion is gorgeous it, it's basically a uh, double circle that you can run as a spiral running around the outside and then uh slowly coming into the inside into the middle of haunted mansion that was the uh, route that we took we'll get more into that here in a second with our concept map our idea map for running through the layout of haunted mansion but nonetheless a sub two minute map that's fantastic like that's that is, at least uh, so far in our testing of let's run 100 maps, that is by far the fastest that we've run any map. Our average time in town was slightly skewed because we had a couple of trades that took us a little bit longer than we would have wanted. And also, of course, the average time in town, we had to roll sextants every three maps. So that's part of the reason why our average time in town uh, was so long, because we had to dump our stashes as well as use sextants and roll those sextants on the maps. And every second like that counts. So that's a little bit of why our average time in town was so long. A lot of the time you'll see that some of our time in town was like sub 15 seconds, and that's because we're literally just going out, grabbing the map, dumping it back in, as opposed to some of these times you can see are quite long, and that's because either we went to take a break, or we were making a trade, or we were rolling sextants. So let's get to the totals. How profitable was this, and what was the total uh, evaluation of this project? Well, the total, let me get rid of this because we spent way more than 325. That's a holdover from our last Let's Run. Uh, so the total uh, value of running this particular layout was not great. If you total up all of our map returns, all of our currency returns, all of our card returns, you get a grand total of 1241 chaos now that sounds like a lot of chaos but don't forget we spent 1300 chaos crafting this now did we actually spend that much chaos buying all of these uh different materials no because i had a bunch of these materials already in my stash from other runs nonetheless that's the value of what we put in to running these maps was about 1300 chaos in value and our total profit margin we were running in the red we were not running in the black uh which it's a it's just a bummer uh that we lost essentially 60 chaos in running these 100 maps and both des and i thought as we were playing through these maps that it was going to be a lot more profitable than it actually turned out to be these numbers really surprised me because of the amount of stuff that we were able to pick up uh and the value the seeming value 
that we thought we were going to have. I think some of that is actually due to Haunted Mansion's layout. I'm going to get more into that in just a moment. But the uh, psychological trick of essentially feeling like we're getting more loot than what we actually did because of the pack density that was provided on the map, which was exceptional. Loved running the map, although proving mathematically it wasn't very profitable. So when you start running more numbers and getting into the analytics of it, our value per click was just under half a chaos per click at 0 0.47 chaos per value. Of course, that number is going to change a little bit if you calculate in uh, the 112 times that we picked up six socket recipes, but right around 2690 or 2700 were the total number of clicks. Uh, and so when you change that number, it gets to be about 0 0.45. So that's that's right around where we were at for our total uh, value per click. The reason why I like to, to tally that up, by the way, those of you that are wondering why on earth would you tally up val value per click, it's because it's, a, it's one of the various mechanisms and statistics that's available to us to evaluate the uh, benefit and the value of particular loot filters. This is something that uh, I've always wondered about playing through Path of Exile is what is the total value and the time spent in picking up currency. Of course, the general consensus about using a loot filter in Path of Exile is that you don't want things to show up on your screen that you're not going to click and pick up. I genuinely and generally agree with that philosophy. However, in order to test out what different sorts of loot filters um, are efficient as well as to test out how efficient they are in terms of gathering currency you may say for instance that you want to uh, allow more things to populate on your loot filter and then pick them up and see if that actually hurts your overall time and your overall uh, currency efficiency or you may want to narrow it down uh, depending on the map that you're running so it's one of the things that i like to do is to actually run with different uh, strictness and different loot filters to actually test which loot filters are more profitable. It's another variable that I like to test out. Uh, and so it's definitely something that I'm going to be doing more of the more of these Let's Run videos that we do. It's something that I encourage you to do even is to test out the value of it. Sometimes there are going to be times and points in the league where you simply go, okay, I don't want to cast as wide a net. I don't want to pick up quite as much stuff. I just want to narrow it down and only select certain things that I'm going to be picking up. But at other points in the, during the league, we do know that the more stuff you pick up, uh, there's more profit uh, involved. So that's one of the reasons why I like to calculate the value per click. Because to me, it's a very, very valuable stat, especially when you're running several batches of different maps to see what loot filters are the best on what maps. Okay, so all of that is our stats and our data from 100 maps. But talking really quickly about the concept map or the concept layout for the Haunted Mansion. So for us, one of the reasons why we felt like we were getting more currency than we actually were was because of this psychological factor of the density of mobs. So typically when you're starting out in this map, you're going to choose to either go right, left, or center. What we chose to do was to run this in two massive overlapping spiraling circles that would run all the way around the outside of the concept map and then eventually make its way towards the center of the house, ending up making a straight line through the middle of the map or the great hallway as we were calling it as we were running these maps. Now, you could, of course, run this differently. That's just the method that we settled on. But the general picture or the general layout of Haunted Mansion, the consistent theme of it, is that there is one massive square or rectangle building in the center of the map, and then there are several adjoining alcoves and courtyards that are based off of that. There are, of course, rooms that you're going to have to watch out for as you're running through the, the, the map itself, but it is a gorgeous map in terms of its layout because regardless if you choose to run left or regardless if you choose to run right, you can essentially run this as one massive circle where you're touching all of these different rooms and all of the different courtyards, making your way all the way around the entirety of the map until eventually you loop back around either starting or finishing at the boss area exiting and then cutting inside the house running again in a second circle until eventually you come to that great middle hallway it really doesn't matter whether or not you go right or left we ran uh, both options as we were running through this right and left sometimes we started at the boss area sometimes we finished at the boss area one of the great things about haunted uh, mansion 
as a layout is that the boss area often is surrounded by several different packs, at least with this level of investment. It's often surrounded by several different packs of monsters. So even if you're trying to take advantage and keep up your rampage stacks, you can go in, kill the boss. There's usually a pack inside there with the boss. Kill the boss, come back outside of the boss's arena, and there's still packs for you to kill, and you're able to keep rampage stacks up. So that was our concept layout map. Again, we wish that we ran into more breaches. Really, there aren't that many bad breach spots. Uh, the breaches that we ran into that were best were, of course, inside the house, uh, because even though it is slightly annoying that you've got to run from room to room, there's still just tons and tons of rooms and tons and tons of area for mobs to spawn inside the breaches. So the worst breach that we actually bumped into was one that was in one of these adjoining alcoves out to the side here where just essentially half of the breach was cut off which you can see here with this style of circle you can see that you're losing about half of the breach uh, and its efficacy because it's going to be outside of the entire map itself that you're simply not going to be able to touch but other than that the rest of the breaches were pretty pretty great consistency in terms of Jun Jun shows up mostly in the corners uh, for her research encounter that's mostly what we found that she's often in the corners even sometimes in the corners at the very beginning of the map when you're choosing whether to, to go right or left. Sometimes she's in one of those adjoining rooms that's off of uh, the atrium as you first walk in to the house. So that was our concept layout. That was our 100 Haunted Mansion maps. Again, thanks to everybody that voted in the straw poll, and thanks so much to Deserad for helping out as we ran these 100 maps. It was beautiful. It was sublime, but it was psychologically tricky because the number of packs that were present in every single room, it was glorious, the number of packs and the density for killing things, for keeping Rampage up, and for getting a sense that we were constantly picking up loot and constantly having loot pinatas for us to burst. But the reality was that it simply wasn't very profitable. Whether or not that's because we were unlucky, whether or not that's because we were lucky, I'll leave that to you all to debate down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more POE videos, and I hope that today is the day where a mirror of Calandra drops for you.